In today's episode of the Elon Musk Bitcoin soap opera, Elon Musk seemingly has refused to confirm or deny, or at least did not rule out the possibility that Tesla had sold its Bitcoin holdings. I'm going to look at this and look at the drama that has all stemmed from a one word reply to a tweet that Elon Musk made. And it turns out that maybe people are a little bit over interpreting what he said in this tweet, but nevertheless, it does tell us the significant volatility in Bitcoin is something that we need to seriously consider. And if one person's tweet can shift Bitcoin's price by over 7%, then it tells us there's a significant amount of risk. And that's what I'm going to look at in this video. Now, I have a background in finance, have a PhD in finance, I'm a quant and an angel investor, and I follow this pretty closely. But if you think I've missed anything, or if you have any comments about this, drop those in the comment section below. And otherwise, of course, it would be brilliant if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Okay, so with that in mind, let's start off with the tweets and see exactly what Elon Musk has said. So here we have the main offending tweet, which is Elon Musk replying to someone else's tweet. So here, a person going by the Twitter handle Crypto Whale had said, Bitcoiners are going to slap themselves next quarter when they find out that Tesla dumped the rest of their Bitcoin holdings. With the amount of hate Elon Musk is getting, I wouldn't blame him. Then Elon Musk responds, indeed. And that is pretty much it. That was enough controversy to send Bitcoin's price down over 7% at the time of recording. Now, I just want to stop here and say that if one person's one word response can shift prices that much, it tells you a lot about the volatility of that particular asset. And it tells you it really is not ready for prime time as a currency, to be totally clear, because something that volatile is clearly not apt to be a currency. That said, this does come against a broader backdrop. So the broader backdrop here was Elon Musk's prior tweet that said, Tesla has suspended vehicle purchases using Bitcoin. We're concerned about the rapidly increasing use of fossil fuels for Bitcoin mining and transactions, especially coal which has the worst emissions of any fuel. Now let's just stop here and admire Elon Musk's complete inability to grasp grammar. But in any case, that's what he was saying here. Now, the next paragraph is, cryptocurrency is a good idea on many levels, and we believe it has a promising future. But this cannot come at a great cost to the environment. Tesla will not be selling any Bitcoin, and we intend to use it for transactions as soon as mining transitions to more sustainable energy. We are also looking at other cryptocurrencies that use less than 1% of Bitcoin's energy per transaction. So there we go. These are the two tweets. And in short, that's what Elon Musk is saying here. He had first raised issues in relation to the environmental footprint of cryptocurrency mining, particularly Bitcoin, but that could in essence stem to many other cryptocurrencies as well. And he'd also mentioned that they were not looking at selling Bitcoin. So let's be clear here. He said, Tesla will not be selling any Bitcoin. Let's try to underline this. And this means that it is unlikely that Tesla has sold Bitcoin. Now, to be clear here, we do need to bear in mind the tenses. He said he will not be selling any Bitcoin, i.e. that is a future tense. And in the prior tweet, or the other tweet, sorry, it's possible that they have already sold some. So this tweet right here that I'm looking at is focusing on the future. So maybe they had sold some in the past, but you would think that this tweet would also imply that they had not sold their existing Bitcoin holdings, but that is not certain to be clear. So that's effectively what has happened in relation to those tweets and in relation to why we're seeing Bitcoin decline by quite as much as we have. Now, this does, of course, come against the backdrop of some other tweets that he had made, and in particular tweets that had been emphasizing Dogecoin over Bitcoin. So, for example, on May 11, he had said, do you want Tesla to accept Doge? And in this highly scientific poll here, it said 78.2% of people said yes, and 21.8% said no. Not that that really means anything, to be totally honest, because of the number of people who voted yes, clearly they could be voting out of joke value, they might have never transacted in any cryptocurrency at all, let alone Dogecoin. But nevertheless, that is a poll that he had posted. Furthermore, there are other supportive tweets in relation to Doge. So for example, he had said, to be clear, 
I strongly believe in crypto, but it can't drive a massive increase in fossil fuel use, especially coal, which then emphasizes his environmental related tweet from before. In addition, he had said, working with Doge devs to improve system transaction efficiency, potentially promising. So it appears here from some tweets, he'd been more emphasizing Dogecoin as opposed to Bitcoin, which is relatively unsurprising given some of the more positive statements he had made about Doge in the past. And it also builds up this broader narrative that he might be shifting away from Bitcoin, notwithstanding his comment that he might be looking to use Bitcoin and transact in it as soon as it becomes more energy efficient and potentially as soon as mining shifts more toward, uh, more toward renewables or potentially alternatively, if there were to be a change in its protocols to make it more energy efficient. In any case, it paints a narrative of a shift away from Bitcoin. So with that in mind, let's look at Bitcoin's price. So here we have Bitcoin's price over the past three months. Now I've gone to the past three months just to show the high. The high up here was around 63,000. The low right now is 45,000. So we're seeing a change, high to low, of a decline of around 28%, give or take a little bit. If we go into the most recent one month, we have seen a decline in Bitcoin's price. Not a steady and consistent decline, but a decline nevertheless. So we've seen it go down, and it went down here to around 50,000. It went back up above 55,000, and then went back down to 45,000. Again, these are in US dollars. If we zoom into the most recent five days, Bitcoin has taken a bit of a beating. Firstly, in relation to the environmental footprint trait, and then secondly, in relation to his failure to confirm that Tesla had not sold any holdings. Then over the most recent one day, we can see this even more. We can see it decline down to 42,000 and then go back up a little bit. Now, the reason it might have gone back up a little bit is some people might have seen this as an opportunity to buy in the dip in inverted commas, causing the price to go back up. However, there's not appear to be any fundamental reason for this $3,000 difference here. Nevertheless, we have seen a little bit of a recovery at the time of recording. Now, clearly this could easily change over time as the recovery is erased or gets better, or if he makes a further statement that elaborates upon what he is saying here. But nevertheless, that's what we're seeing in terms of Bitcoin's price. It is definitely tanked in the wake of these tweets. So how then do we interpret all of this? Because this is a little bit opaque and a little bit difficult to fully grasp. Because we really need to work out firstly, has Tesla bought or sold any Bitcoin since the initial prior statement when they indicated they had actually bought their initial holding of Bitcoin? The answer to that is we don't really know. It might come out in Tesla's next filings. However, we don't have any information at the moment. Tesla might have sold something, but we really don't know, or at least I don't know at the time of recording. And these tweets have not exactly helped to clear up matters. In the one hand, he is saying that Tesla would not sell, but on the other hand, he had not ruled out the possibility that Tesla had sold. However, I would proffer a more simple interpretation. So if we go back to this tweet, what do we see? We see two paragraphs here. We see the first paragraph here, about Tesla dumping their holdings. In the next paragraph, we say, with the amount of hate Elon Musk is getting, I wouldn't blame him. And then he responds, indeed. Now that could easily be in relation to the second paragraph, i.e. he could be noting that he is annoyed with the amount of hate he is getting from Bitcoin maximalists. And that might be what he is remarking upon. However, his one word here is so incredibly vague that it creates issues. So the first thing I want to note here is we don't know whether or not Bitcoin has been sold by Tesla. However, I think it is important to not leap to conclusions before more information comes to hand. The second key takeaway from this is that there's too much volatility in Bitcoin for it to have prime time as a currency, a hedge against anything, or a store of value or an asset. Of course, like I've already said, if one person's tweets can shift prices that much, I told you the volatility is too extreme for Bitcoin to really be used as a currency. The third takeaway is that perhaps it is important to at least consider the impact of the environmental footprint of these cryptocurrencies. Now, I don't want to overstate the environmental footprint here because there has been an argument 
around and about the environmental impact of various cryptos and the impact that proof of stake versus proof of work has, and also the impact of the environmental issues as compared to bricks and mortar finance. However, it is something that people appear to be paying attention to. Kevin O'Leary for one, but also myriad other cryptocurrencies have had their environmental footprint analyzed. So let's just briefly look at that. So just looking briefly at the comparative energy consumption of these cryptocurrencies, we can see, focusing on this, the Bitcoin is really quite energy, well, inefficient may be too strong a word, but it consumes more energy per transaction, 707 kilowatt hours per transaction, compared to Dogecoin done at 0.12 and Ethereum at 62.56, telling us there's a significant difference between Bitcoin and the other cryptocurrencies. Now, it's something that institutional investors have perhaps been considering, with, for example, CalPERS voting for greater environmental disclosure at Berkshire Hathaway. So it appears there might be a trend here. So it could be that Elon Musk is seeing there might be additional scrutiny of the energy consumption of cryptocurrencies in relation to Tesla and is therefore bearing that one in mind. So we do need to consider that at the moment. The next thing to bear in mind from an investor's perspective is it's important to diversify. So this really is a lesson in diversification to some extent in that it tells us that each individual cryptocurrency can have good or bad days. One would need to, as an investor, diversify in order to get the best return per unit of risk. Now, clearly, you do need to rule out cryptocurrencies that are absolute nonsense and are going nowhere. But nevertheless, one perhaps wants to be cautious about putting all of one's eggs in a basket, or all one's eggs in the same basket, or whatever that saying is. Uh, but in any case, you do need to be careful about diversification and risk, given the sheer volatility of each of these underlying cryptocurrencies. It also brings up the issue that when adding them to a diversified portfolio, you do need to be cautious about exactly how much of your portfolio ultimately goes into cryptocurrencies, because there clearly can be issues in relation to that. So those are some clear takeaways from this whole incident. Now, this then leads us to the next takeaway. If Bitcoin can become a has-been and can be supplanted by another cryptocurrency. What does that tell us about the intrinsic value of each of these currencies? Put differently, if you can hold your crypto and then that crypto becomes basically worthless when people move on to the next new bright and shiny object, does that not mean that those cryptocurrencies inherently have a short-lived value? And does that not undermine their whole thesis as a store of value or a hedge or even a currency if they can simply be eliminated and erased when the next new thing comes along. And at the moment, that could be what is happening. If Bitcoin is replaced by Ethereum or by Dogecoin or by whatever else, does that not tell us that there is not really a scarcity in Bitcoin? It can be replaced by the next crypto. And that possibility of clear replacement tells us that a whole scarcity story involved in Bitcoin having finite supply really is not as strong as sometimes we're led to believe because these things can potentially be replaced. And that short lifespan until the crypto is replaced by the next one really does give one some pause about how much value each of these things really have. And that's something that needs to be considered. And it's something that Warren Buffett, for example, has certainly noted when criticizing cryptocurrencies and the value that they might hold. And in any case, those are some thoughts about the ongoing issues in relation to Bitcoin and Elon Musk. I hope you've found it somewhat informative. If you think I've missed anything, or if you have any comments, drop those in the comments below. And otherwise, it would be great if you liked the video and subscribed to the channel. And I hope to see you for future videos as well. Bye.